Maricopa County Board of Supervisors announced yesterday that former Supreme Court Judge Ruth McGregor will oversee an independent investigation into ballot printers at Phoenix area polling sites that were defective on Election Day in November. The printers produced ballots that were too light to be read by the tabulator machines and voter lines were backed up in some areas amid the confusion. However, county officials say everyone had a chance to vote and all ballots were counted. McGregor will hire experts to examine those printers and the ballot reading process. And yesterday, former Governor Doug Ducey's border wall containers finally coming down following a federal lawsuit filed last month. Four miles of the Coordinate National Forest are now closed off to the public for safety concerns. Early on, the Center for Biological Diversity filed an intent to sue Governor Ducey for violating federal law by blocking streams and washes along the border. Damage because they were ripping out trees and widening roads in order to deploy their containers. All that needs to be repaired. They also dammed all those ephemeral streams. The four mile stretch of the Coronado National Forest will stay closed until March 15th. The mother of a newborn will spend more than a decade behind bars for the death of her child. News 4 Tucson's Lupita Murillo has more on the case and the judge's sentence. The report had come back um, that the baby did have a uh, positive presence of methamphetamine as well as morphine. Michelle Wimberly pleaded guilty to two counts of child abuse. This case began December 30th, 2019 at this house. Wimberly called 911 for medical help. A female caller had come on the line saying that her baby, which was born an hour ago, wasn't breathing. Since there was a death involved, Pima County Sheriff's homicide detectives were called. They found inconsistencies as to when the child was born. The baby wasn't born necessarily an hour ago. Um, the original call time was about just before 8.30 p.m., but the information had come that the baby was born somewhere between maybe 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. A report from the Arizona Department of Child Safety says the baby's mother, Michelle Wimberly, admitted to using oxys while she was pregnant with her daughter. Wimberly told detectives they were going to use a midwife, but detectives found no evidence of one. From my understanding, uh, they had consulted online videos uh, to just generally assist with how to deliver a baby at home. Deputy Legg says anytime there's a death, it's a tragedy. But when it's a, you know, completely innocent uh, child and this child was just born, you know, it's it's just heartbreaking. That was Lupita Murillo reporting one person is recovering after a car slammed into a building near Ina and Thornydale Thursday afternoon. You can see there on your screen the damage done to the building from the crash. Northwest Fire says one person was injured and taken to the hospital. The Tucson Fire Department set a new record in 2022. The department says it responded to a record-breaking number of service calls. TFD says it responded to nearly 102,000 calls, which averages out to nearly 280 calls for service every day, ranging from medical emergencies to technical rescues, fires, car accidents, and various other calls. A mother in Phoenix is now pleading for the return of a stolen Make-A-Wish statue. The statue honors a Phoenix boy who died of leukemia back in 1980. Jade Cunningham has the story. There's sadness at the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. When I buried him the first time, it's almost like the second time. After it was found Wednesday morning, a statue. A little over four feet tall, um, bronze statue created by an, um, an amazing artist. Was stolen overnight. I think the statue symbolizes hope. Um, for many of our wish kids, you know, the wish experience is truly what brings them hope during a time when they need it most. That's because the sculpture that stood at the Make-A-Wish entrance for the past five years. Every time. Is that of Chris Gracious. A young man that his mother Linda and so many others have called the inspiration wish kid. Chris was a seven year old Arizona boy who was diagnosed with leukemia. Unfortunately, um, it was in 1980 when um, a leukemia diagnosis was a little bit more serious. Chris wasn't going to make it. His parents then determined to make his one wish come true, becoming a police officer. 
I saw a little boy I hadn't seen for a while. He came alive, strong, happy. If you see the pictures of him on his wish day, you would never know that just four days later, he succumbed to his illness. From the uniform he wore to the smile on his face, that statue, similar to this replica, was more of a symbol. It isn't just a statue. I mean, it truly, when we talk about Chris as an inspiration, he really brought together all of these people, including the six people who founded Make-A-Wish. For me, it's every child that needs a wish is hope, strength, and joy. Hope that they're gonna get their wish, strength when they get it, and joy for memories years to come. Now gone, they're asking the community for help. Hopeful the memory of Chris will inspire whoever took it to bring it back. By the grace of God, it will be returned. So this is, excuse me, <laughs> actually a plea to anybody out there that knows anything, heard anything, saw anything, please. The Tucson Boys and Girls Club gets a huge donation, $33.5 million. The multi-million dollar gift coming from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. Over the next three to five years, the money will help renovate old locations. That includes a state-of-the-art teen tech workforce center to help young members gain valuable skills before going into the job market.